Hi everyone, so in this video we are going to talk about two things. One is categorizing types of interval and the other is getting a start on how to find quality for the perfect category of intervals. Okay, so first thing, let's review a little bit. There are two parts to every interval. That is size and quality. The easy one of those two is size. We just count the total number of lines and spaces involved between two notes. So if I have a G and a D, and I want to know the size of the interval of those two notes, I just count every line and space involved. So I start on wherever the bottom note is, and I end wherever the top note is, and I go one, two, three, four, five. This must be a fifth. Okay, when it comes to quality for intervals, there are rules depending on the size about how you can label it. So there are two categories. There's the intervals that can be perfect. So the way we can label those intervals is either perfect, augmented, or diminished. And the sizes that are allowed those labels are one, four, five, and eight. So unison or prime, fourth, fifth, and octave. So those four intervals, half the ones that we'll basically deal with, right? The total number of simple intervals is one to eight. So half of those is capable of being perfect or in the perfect interval category. So those can only accept these labels for quality. They can be perfect, they can be augmented, or they can be diminished. And then the remaining four, seconds, thirds, sixths, and sevenths, sixths this is so fun to say right those have one extra category so there are three labels for perfect category intervals there are four labels for imperfect category intervals so major minor augmented and diminished are your choices when you have an interval size of two three six or seven so when it comes to quality we have two categories of labels can be perfect and can't be perfect. So the perfect intervals, just so we have it nearby, are the ones, fours, the fives, fifths, and octaves. And the imperfects are two, three, six, and seven. Okay, so we've got our categories. So that should be very easy. You just check the size and you know if you find a unison or a fourth or fifth, you're gonna mark it as a perfect category. And if it's an imperfect category, it's two, three, six, and seven. So when it comes to labeling these, your choices will then be perfect, augmented, which means larger, or diminished, which means smaller. Or you can have a major, minor, or again, augmented or diminished. The thing that every once in a while I find students doing is uh, they'll label a fifth major when they mean perfect. You have to be very, very careful about this because a perfect category interval can never be labeled as major or minor and vice versa. A imperfect interval can never be labeled as perfect. Make sure you're very specific about your labeling once you get your size. Cool, so let's talk about getting quality now for just the perfect category. So first thing we do is get size always. So if we see two notes, the first thing you do is figure out the size. Now these are both on the same space and we count the total number of lines and spaces to get our size and it's one. So that means that this can be perfect augmented, diminished. Those are the labels that can apply. And right now we're only going to work on perfect category uh, qualities. So first thing you do, figure out which category you're in. How do you do that? By getting the size. So this is a unison. It's in the perfect category. And then the next step is to look at those two notes and to take into account any accidentals they might have on them and then count the total number of half step moves you need to get from one to the next. So a perfect unison is no half step moves. They're both on the same key of the piano. So zero moves means perfect for unison. To get a perfect fourth, which sounds like this, it has kind of an open sound, we 
have our two notes. We figure out the size first, one, two, three, four. Okay, it's a fourth. And in order to have a perfect fourth, I need to have five half steps, right? So I need five half step moves to get from one to the other. So I start on A and then I move once to that black key. That's one half step, two, three, four, five. Five half steps makes four perfect. For a fifth, it's seven half steps. And then for an octave, it is 12. The thing is, is that you never need to do this counting really for unisons or octaves. As long as it's the same note to the same note, so A to A, or for an octave, still, in this case, A to A, as long as it's the same note, same accidentals on both, it's always gonna be perfect, right? So this could be A sharp and A sharp, the distance is not going to change. As long as the notes are the same for unisons and octaves, exactly the same, including accidentals, they will be perfect. So the only two you really need to deal with in a more complicated way are fourths, where you really need to check the spacing, or fifths. In order to augment or diminish one of these, let's take this fourth. So right now we have five half steps. Now, to get to the other two qualities, we just make a single half step change. So to get to augmented, you add a half step move in here. So that could be the bottom note or the top note. The thing that matters is the distance between the two keys on the piano or the distance between those two frets on the guitar or whatever it is. So if I have perfect, that's my perfect place, right? So fourth, it's five. If I find that I have six half steps, I get augmented. If I'm short by a half step, I get diminished. Now there's a variety of ways of getting there. So let's make this fourth augmented in a couple different ways. So how can I augment that? Well, one way is I can raise the D at the top. So that will give me this. So remember our starting point hasn't changed, it's still A. And then here was D previously, and we're gonna raise it with that sharp. I now have one, two, three, four, five, six half steps. So six moves to get from here to here. That means I now have an augmented interval. So this is an augmented fourth. Cool. Let's get it augmented another way. What if I, instead of changing the D, I'll leave the D alone, and instead I lower the A. So I'm going to take that original A and move it down. And here's my original D. So there's the original two. If I lower the A, I also expand the number of keys between those two. So now I go how many moves? One, two, three, four, five, six. Again, this is augmented again. Now you'll get a variety of accidentals that affect these. Let's do and see what happens if we put an A sharp. So here's our originals, and I'm gonna put an A sharp here. That is gonna give me less moves. They got closer together on the keyboard. One, two, three, four. Well, for a fourth, five is perfect. We took away one, we lost one. We are now four half steps. Well, that is called a diminished fourth. And we only have three possibilities, at least in the world that we want to inhabit. You can break these and make them doubly augmented or doubly diminished, but it's mostly a waste of time. So hopefully you will never see anything more than a perfect augmented or diminished fourth or fifth or octave or any of those others. So here's our fourth and I've sharped the A and now it's become diminished. Now another way to do it, here's our original again. And instead of that sharp, I'm going to put a flat on the D and see what happens. So what if I lower this D? One, two, three, four again. This is a diminished fourth. The real trick is you kind of, if you're going to do it this way, you need to memorize the number of half steps for perfect, right? So memorize perfect and then don't memorize augmented for fourths and diminished for fourths. Just remember that Augmented is one half step larger than perfect, and diminished is one half step smaller than perfect. And that's consistent across all the perfect intervals. So if I start 
and I have a perfect fifth at seven. If I find I have eight, that's just one bigger. But I don't want to memorize that a, f that a fifth needs uh, six for diminished, seven for perfect, and eight for augmented. Instead, it's better to think, I know what perfect is. Is it bigger by one? Augmented. Is it smaller by one? Diminished. Don't spend your time adding the need for more memorization. Just memorize a fourth is five half steps, a fifth is seven. And then don't do anything with the prime or the octave. The trick for the prime or the octave is if the notes are the same, it's perfect. So here's a perfect octave on D. So here I go. So here's D to D. I know those are perfect because it's the same note, same accidentals, everything else is the same. Now, if I have a D sharp on the bottom and a natural on the top, that would give me one smaller. It moved one step closer on the piano, and now I have a diminished. It shrunk the distance between the two notes by raising the bottom note. What if I lower the top note to D flat? Same action, right? If they were the same, they would be here to here, and they've gotten smaller by one. What if I wanted larger? That would give me augmented. D to D is here. This is one half step larger than that. Usually we think from the bottom note, and you can think, huh, I've got D to D flat, say. What I want to think is D to D is perfect. How does this new note relate to perfect? Is it a shorter distance between the two, or is it a larger distance by one? And then you have your answer. It's either D to D, which is perfect, shorter by one in the distance would make it diminished, and larger by one would make it augmented. And the same deal, you can change the bottom note and have the same kinds of things happen. If I raise the bottom note to D sharp, I've shrunk the distance between the two. And here's again where perfect would be, right? And then if I lower by one, I've spread them out. So that is now augmented with D flat there. Cool. Last thing, unisons. A unison is on top of each other, right? Two people singing the same note. So I can make that bigger. I can have a D and a D sharp being sung at the same time. It's a little easier to see it if, say, we have one note after another so that we can see this clearly. So here's D sharp and D. So doesn't matter which one's first, it's still D sharp and D, which is there. So D and D sharp, right? So what kind of unison is that? Well, it's gotten larger because there's now one move in there. So if they're on top of each other, right, if they're both singing D or both playing D, that's zero, that's perfect. If they're actually one step apart in either direction, then we have augmented. But we can't get any smaller than on top of each other, right? There's no smaller thing than a half step that I can do, and I can't go negative. So there is no diminished unison. Unisons can only be perfect or a little bit bigger because perfect is at nothing, right? Perfect is zero. We can't get smaller than nothing as far as getting our notes spread out, right? If they're on top of each other, that's as close as they can ever get. All right, let's do a few examples. So here we go, example one. Okay, and we're starting with the unison and it's on C. So I'm just gonna mark the C on my pop-up piano here. And it's actually that C if I'm being specific about the octaves. Okay, first thing is size. So I've, I know it's a unison, they're on the same note. And then the question is, what is their quality? Well, I know, hopefully, that if it's the same note to the same note, it's perfect for unisons and octaves. And this is a unison, right, or a prime. So same note to same note must be perfect. It's zero steps, right? Zero moves to get from one to the other. Let's do another one. OK, now we have something a little harder. We're just going to go down here and mark an A and a D sharp. So let's have a look at those on the piano. Here's A, here's D sharp. We know it's a fourth. We need to remember what the recipe is for a perfect fourth before we can tell whether this has been added to or made smaller 
by augmenting or diminishing. So if I come back over here, a fourth is five half steps. So let's go back and I'll get my fourth back here. All right, and then A to D sharp I've got on my piano. So five is perfect. Let's check and see what we have. One, two, three, four, five, six moves. So six moves to get there. That means this is one larger than perfect. This is a augmented fourth. All right, let's do another one. Oh, another fourth. Easy. So still A and D, but they've both been lowered. Now I have A flat to D flat, and I'm gonna count the moves. One, two, three, four, five. Well, five is what counts for perfect, so this must be a perfect fourth. Five moves. One, two, three, four, five. All right, let's do another one. A fifth. Okay, let's check. So we've got B to F. The lowest B I have right now is right there. So B to F. For a fifth, what is perfect? A fifth is seven. So seven moves will make it perfect. Let's see if we get our seven moves. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're short by one. That means it's smaller by one. That must be a diminished fifth. One, two, three, four, five, six moves, diminished fifth. Okay, got another fifth here. Let's see what happened to this one. So F to C, and the F has been lowered by one with that flat. All right, let's count the moves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seven is perfect. This is bigger by one. This is an augmented fifth. And there's our moves. Okay, we got an octave. So we know that if they're the same note to the same note, they're going to be perfect. So let's start off pretending like they're the same note to the same note. So A to A. So that would be perfect. And then let's see what that flat did. Did it shrink the distance between them or did it make it larger? So I'm going to take that A and lower it by one. Well, that looks like it got it smaller. It got closer by a key. So this must be a diminished octave. Cool, 11 moves instead of 12, although I'm never ever gonna count that. Okay, so again, perfect octave. This is perfect because they are the same note to the same note. Even though it has that scary double flat on it, E double flat is really D, right, in sound, E double flat. So just lowered twice. It's the same note to the same note. So it must be perfect. We don't even have to do any counting. As long as it's the same note to the same note for octaves and unisons, it's perfect. If you see something different than that, then you might need to check to see if it got smaller or larger. Okay, and one more, D sharp and A sharp. So this is a fifth, right? One, two, three, four, five. Remember, you always need to do size first, D, A, and then they've both been raised. So now we have that. And let's count the moves. Seven is perfect. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, this is a perfect fifth. Nice. And that's that for kind of doing the long way for fourths and fifths. If you want the faster way, uh, check the comment section. And I have a link for a kind of quicker way for doing fourths and fifths that kind of uses a trick. I would start off doing them the slow way. And then once you start to get comfortable and you've seen a few of these, give the trick version the faster way. Uh, another shot. There's also some cool ways to do it where you look at key signatures and things, uh, but I'm just going to stick with my trick way to do it or counting for our purposes at the moment. Okay, go solve some quality for perfect intervals. All right, see you in the next one.